Hello everyone, this is the Titus Man, or welcome to my channel. And uh, this is the review of SummerSlam. I just finished up watching it. I, you know, there is a, an old saying on the, the interview with The Undertaker is where he said he, uh, when, his first, when he first came down to the entrance and he had the crowd speechless, silent. Um, that's kind of how I feel right now. It started out pretty well. I got to watch the uh, the pregame match with the uh, United States Championship on the line. Uh, the um, I, I don't understand. Um, what well, a finish! Anyway, before we get to the finish, the they first start off with the. Uh, Asuka versus Bailey match, which oh a little interference from her little ta her her tag team partner, and she retains her championship. And uh, then they had a match against. Well, I I'm doing my best to review this uh, because of the finish. The finish is what's. I, I, I'm, I'm a little speechless at this point. I'm usually all over the place. I'm talking. But for some reason, it's rubbing me the wrong way. And uh, I can get to that just in a minute. But then I think we had a match. Either a tag, I think a tag team match. And the tag team champions retained their, their... The Raw tag team champions retained their championship... Then there was then it was the the two girls which actually if I if I could say a a a match that stole the show tonight was the match between the two girls and despite them not using the table that they set up or uh, 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 Rose set up for for Deville it was a phenomenal match and that 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 was a, a show stealing moment right there. It, they stole the show with that match. It was a great match. Uh, unfortunately for you DeVille fans, Rose got the victory, meaning DeVille has to leave the WWE. But that was a very good match. It's just a show-stealing match. And then the, the... Then the Viper, Randy Orton... Or the Apex Predator, or whatever they're calling him now, uh, came out and he was uh, taking on Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. And I know they had a bunch of vignettes about other things that are happening and stuff like that. I don't care. I'm care I'm here for wrestling. I want to see wrestling matches. Well, Randy Orton did his usual stuff. At the beginning of the match. No surprise there. Running out of the ring. The typical Viper. You know, the typical bad guy. Can't call him the bad guy now, because that was the... That was Razor's. Yeah, well, Orton's a bad guy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, character-wise. I mean, I mean, in ring. Let's just say he's the... He plays the quote-unquote heel very well. And once again, he did it again. And all all throughout the match, you're thinking, when's that RKO coming? When's the RKO coming? So you know it's going to come. You, you, you always have that idea that Randy Orton, and he's proved it time and time again, time again that at any point of a match, out of nowhere, he can hit that RKO, except for tonight. Tonight, Drew McIntyre got the best of him. Gave him that uh, that over the head uh, pin for the win. Phenomenal. That was pretty good because you thought uh, Ar Ar Orton's gonna kick out of that. There's no way. And it was one, two, three. Perfect. Perfect finish. Hey, it's not a, a roll up for the win. It's a little different, but that was a phenomenal match. And then. 
the match I was looking forward to. The match, as a uh, Bray Wyatt fan, I was looking forward to. And I was, maybe I, gave, maybe I put, maybe I hyped myself up a little too much for this. I was expecting them to go all out with this. I was expecting them to, you know what, since they announced it, it's a false count anywhere match, they'd go out back in the back, they'd, they'd, uh, they'd exchange burrows all over the place. I have a feeling the, the, as far as they went is where they needed to go because apparently they wanted them to finish in the Thunderdome. Um, I get, so the fans, the, the virtual fans can see the finish. I mean, the match had great spots. Braun Strowman throwing uh, Ray into the barricade, crushing the barricade. You know who's the toughest person in that match? The table. The announce table was the toughest person in this match. That table did not give. Oh, it was broken in half. That table didn't give. <laughs> you weren't you weren't making that table submit. That table was like, come on. You you guys think you can break me? Uh uh, I'm standing up for for this. I ain't taking this no more. And that table throughout the night is the toughest person in that arena because it is survived. Uh, I think two DDTs, and I think it was a, uh, a choke slam or something. Yeah, it was either a choke slam or a power bomb. I think it was a choke slam. Uh, uh, Ron delivered to Bray right through the announce table, and the table's just get off me. <laughs> the table wasn't having it. Just like get off me, Bray. I don't need this. And. Uh, and then they had that old backstage brawl, which wasn't too far from the arena. And here's here's what I knew. I knew the champ. I knew the Universal Championship was going to change hands because the the WWE Championship did not change hands. And once again, you can you can kind of figure out what's going to happen during these matches about well, during the, during what happened in the next last match. Usually. You know, if if there's not a world heavyweight title change or WWE champion title change, then they're gonna uh, have that universal change change hands. So, so as as they're doing this little back and forth in the back, and then uh, Bray hits the that that signature sister Anna, there yeah, hits all hits hits his his. Technically, it's a reverse STO, but that's no hair there. When he hits his finisher on on Bray in the back, and he goes for the pin, and Braun triumphantly count, uh, kicks out, and then Bray brings him back, slams him through that big nice, mon big nice screen, <laughs> and uh, I think they had some type of protective film on that because. If, if really, truly, if if he threw him into that, and it would have broke instantly. I mean, even my phone can't handle that. Anyway, so back to the action. And then he brings him down, and uh, somehow Braun gets. And I'm, I'm I'm trying to remember. I just watched it. So Braun gets the upper hand there for a minute. Goes into the toolbox that the Fiend earlier used and hit uh, Braun with. They're just back and forth. And then Braun had this brilliant idea. Let's expose the wood underneath the mat. Okay, so he he's there. He had a box cutter cutting up the mat. Throws away all the, the foam and the, the, the cover off to the mat. And then he was going to, uh, I guess, power slam him through it. Now and then the fiend or Bray Wyatt hits Sister Annabelle Anna, 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 I'm sorry, it's late and I'm not too happy with this finish. Anyway, so he hits his finisher three times, pins Braun Strowman for the win. You that? You know what? That's it. It's over. Yay. Okay, go home. No. Then Roman Reigns comes out of nowhere and spears 
uh, Bray Wyatt, spears Braun Strowman, and then, uh, like, he is the champ, declares that he is the champ. So expect a triple threat match between Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and uh, Bray Wyatt probably in the next pay-per-view. Uh, well, uh, that that's my opinion. So what's your opinion? Let me know uh, in the comments section down below. The like button. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, keep it real.